Good morning to Midweek Connection here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. Uh, once again, I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we're happy that we have the opportunity to uh, read our scripture for today and talk about it and pray about it. So let me open us in a word of prayer. Uh, gracious Lord, we are thankful to you for your love for us and for the word that you give us, that we would hear from you and be transformed by your word uh, into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. So thank you for this opportunity that you give us, and uh, thank you for um, just the opportunity to uh, be in your presence and to hear your word today. We thank you and we praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our first song today is Psalm 5. Uh, and just as a reminder, we know that uh, many of these psalms are repeated uh, during this Lent uh, season, and these are... Uh, they're repeated because we all need to hear these words more regularly and be transformed by them. So, Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are destruction, their throats are open graves, they flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem, he gathers the outcasts of Israel, he heals the brokenhearted, and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars, he gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord, and abundant in power, his understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden, he casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food, and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Old Testament passage today comes from Exodus chapter 7. Uh, starting in verse 8 and running through verse 24. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Perform a wonder, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did as the Lord had commanded. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, the magicians of Egypt, did the same by their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff, and they became snakes. But Aaron's staff swallowed up theirs. Still Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he is going out to the water. Stand by at the riverbank to meet him. And take in your hand the staff that was turned into a snake. Say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you to say, Let my people go, so that they may worship me in the wilderness. But until now you have not listened. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. See, with the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water that is in the Nile, and it shall be turned to blood. The fish in the river shall die. The river itself shall stink and the Egyptians shall be unable to drink water from the Nile. The Lord said to Moses, 
Say to Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over its rivers, its canals, and its ponds, and all its pools of water, so that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout the whole land of Egypt, even in the vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded. In the sight of Pharaoh and of his officials, he lifted up the staff and struck the water in the river, and all the water in the river was turned into blood. And the fish in the river died. The river stank, so that the Egyptians could not drink its water, and there was blood throughout the whole land of Egypt. But the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts. So Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. Pharaoh turned and went into his house, and he did not take even this to heart. And all the Egyptians had to dig along the Nile for water to drink, for they could not drink the water of the river. And from the New Testament, we read 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 through chapter 3, verse 6. But thanks to God, thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession, and through us spreads in every place the fragrance that comes from knowing him. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing, to the one a fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not peddlers of God's word like so many, but in Christ we speak as persons of sincerity, as persons sent from God and standing in his presence. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Surely <coughs> we do not need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you, do you? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, to be known and ready by all. And you show that you are a letter of Christ, prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are competent of ourselves to claim anything is coming from us. Our competence is from God, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Our gospel reading is from Mark chapter 10. He left that place and went to the region of Judah and beyond the Jordan. And crowds again gathered around him, and as was his custom, he again taught them. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Jesus answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. Jesus said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And Jesus took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. And then we'll read Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on the rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. 
Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they're breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And our final psalm today is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. A sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure, Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, then bulls will be offered on the altar. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Natalie, I think we had some interesting texts today. Everything from that Exodus passage with the whole Nile being turned into blood, uh, the the Mark passage speaking about divorce and that Second Corinthians passage again um, talking about the ways that uh, God is uh, through Paul uh, continuing to try to call people to a relationship with himself and 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 how to live faithfully in that. Um, I'm, I'm struck by the the detail of that narrative story from Exodus where God tells Moses what to do and then tells Aaron to do it and then tells him that what he's going to say and then he tells him again what he's going to say and then they do these things and uh, the phrase that uh, continued to come back to me was how Pharaoh's heart was hardened and and and, and it's interesting even in that Mark passage where uh, when asked about divorce and remarriage and, and Jesus says that hey well Moses allowed for divorce, but it was because of their hardness of heart. And so it's like, well, we always kind of think, well, Pharaoh's the big bad guy, right? But, right. Right. Because he is. Because right. he is. Right. <laughs> but then the very people of God that are uh, uh, called by God to be witnesses in his kingdom um, uh, themselves have these hard hearts. And and I think, well, if the if the people that knew the law of Moses and the people who had experienced these blessings and uh, and, and the, the miracles that they were able to see, both in the Hebrew scriptures and in the Christian scriptures, they see these things, they experience these things, and they still have a hard heart. I always find it curious that people that lived and walked with Jesus and saw this, and even in the Old Testament, right. where there were there was conversation 
with God and he appeared in the burning bush and, and there's all these things where people they saw they saw the mighty hand of God with the plagues and whatnot and yet they question and they have hard hearts and I mean like we are called so much to step out on faith and yet they lived it and they saw it and they doubted and they questioned right. and they had the hard hearts right. and that's always that's always kind of struck me that yeah, it's just like you saw it how how do you still question it you were right there it's right in front of you <laughs> exactly and so i kind of wonder like even in our lives today how many blessings has god revealed to us right. and how regularly do we just do things that are contrary to what god wants us to do are we put it you know that second Corinthians? we put it on ourselves that somehow it's our by our own competence right. that we're able to achieve it and we don't give credit where that credit should be given yeah. because it was the work of God and it's God and man. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's exactly right. Um, uh, so, um, so again, we have God's word to us. We read these stories and uh, the, the temptation I think that we all have is to, uh, yeah, look how bad those some people are, how, how dumb they are, their hearts are hardened, and then to uh, fail to reflect upon how frequently our own hearts can be hardened. Uh, how how um, how we are regularly in need of um, not just personal repentance, but even repentance as a community. You know, within within the church, you know, the the wrongs that we as a as a community of people do. Um, how can we repent of those things? Uh, how can our hearts be transformed? Um, and and. It, it, it always goes back to the Psalms for me. I know that we've talked about this before, but and how the Psalms are uh, expressions of, of every human emotion um, where we can be giving praise to God, uh, we can be uh, lamenting of our sins, we can be uh, angry at sinners and the wrongs that are being done. Um, but just that, that uh, regular reminder of repentance, that regular reminder of God's grace in the midst of that, and how Psalm 51 that we concluded with um, always is, is a testimony to that. Yeah. So uh, complicated passages, um, but sometimes cut and dry passages. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, 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 I think that's about it. I don't know well, what, what more well, to say. I was, so what what I found interesting in I believe it was the uh, at the end of the Mark passage when the children are coming mm -hmm. and the disciples are trying to you know shoo them away and he says you know truly the kingdom of God belongs to people such as this for if you don't come to me as children and it there's always this question of so what does that mean because I believe it's in Ephesians but don't quote me on that where it talks about um, you know you can't be tossed about like a child that there should be maturity. In faith, but yet here in this Mark passage, um, Jesus is saying, you know, let them come to me. This is who the kingdom of God belongs to. So, how? What does that mean, coming to God as a child? Mm -hmm. But when you look at that Exodus passage, like what I always found interesting was, you know, Moses definitely questioned God when God said, you know, I called you, and he said, eh, this is you don't want me. You want somebody right. else. But God persists, and he and he and he follows through and does what God asks. But can you imagine? God tells you, you're going to go, you're going to throw down the staff, you're going to say this, this is going to happen. One, the staff is going to turn into a snake. I mean, that's, you know, how does it happen? Right. And so they step out on faith as a child. You tell a child to do something, and they do it, mm -hmm. and they don't question. And then the magicians and the sorcerers come in, and they throw their staffs down, and I can only imagine sitting there going, what's going to happen now? Because this was something that I was supposed to be able to do, and now mm. they could do the same thing. Mm. I mean, would you feel like you were the child that was like, oh, did I do something wrong? I don't know. Mm. But like a child who comes back, they trust. They they have this almost blind trust. Mm. When Moses and Aaron then go, God says, go to the Nile River, reach out, touch it with the staff. And they don't question, they just do it. And I think sometimes, you know, when, what does it look like to come to God as a child? It is sometimes it is that blind trust mm -hmm. and it's just okay that's what you said that's what I'm gonna do and I think maybe that's part of what that means coming coming to the feet of Jesus as a child coming to 
to God as a child. It's just you have to trust yeah, even when it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I think children get that right. I don't right. think we do, but I think kids get that. Right. So that was interesting. Uh, and and the more that you do that, and the more Jesus demonstrates His trustworthiness, you know, there's there's that there's that initial leap of faith, and then it should probably become more regular in our lives. Right? right, and I do think right. I mean, and you can look at a child parent child relationship. There is trust right. because right. they have been, and so yes, so that trust is going to grow with right. time. I do agree with that. So. Um, you know, just jumping back to that Second Corinthians passage, just briefly uh, talking about the uh, the aroma of Christ uh, for those who are being saved. It's it's uh, this beautiful fragrance of, from life to life for those who are perishing from death to death. Um, you know, the, one of the words that jumped out from the Exodus passage was, you know, the Nile stank. Right, <laughs> like, right. Ooh, and the stank, and the fish yeah. died, and I was like, ooh, you know, it's like that word stank is in the Bible, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, but, uh, no, it'd be terrible, it'd be, it'd be terrible, um, but, uh, but, but again, the, the difference is, is do you have trust in right. Jesus, um, or are you, or do you not, and, uh, that, that idea of, of being increasingly transformed into, into the image of Jesus Christ, uh, I, I just, it's, it's something that I really look forward to, right. even though there are complications and, and differences uh, and difficulties that we face, but, um, but Jesus is there, uh, you know, this whole idea of, you know, we are not peddlers of God's word, uh, but Christ speaks to us with, um, you know, persons of sincerity, uh, you know, standing in the presence of God, and and as people that have the opportunity to teach others about God's word, um, being real, being sincere, uh, right. not doing it for uh, personal gain, but for, for, right. the, for the love and compassion that God has for other people, um, I think it's just important for all, so all of us to remember. Right. You know? Well, all right. Um, we could probably talk about this like <laughs> even longer, uh, and, and we're glad that uh, that you had a chance to to join us today. Again, this is uh, Natalie Craddock, and she's uh, the children's director here at First Presbyterian Church in San Angelo, and she's also in, in study to uh, to expand her ministry opportunities. And, and looking forward to to that together. Um, if if you are watching this, we, we're grateful that you're watching it. And down at the bottom of the YouTube video, there's always a place that you can like and subscribe if you want. I don't even know exactly what that even means, like and subscribe, <laughs> but you can do that. And uh, and I think that just gives us an opportunity to uh, to expose God's word to more people. And if you do have questions or comments, please do put them in uh, in below, and we'll look forward to. Uh, hearing from you. Um, look forward to uh, those of you who can worship with us on Sunday mornings here at 1030 at church. Uh, Sunday schools are usually at 915. Uh, happy that you guys could join us there. Um, let me go ahead and close this in a word of prayer. Uh, Lord, again, thank you for your word to us today. Thank you for the opportunity that, uh, that you give to uh, Natalie and to me to talk about these things uh, and to uh, learn from each other. Lord, I ask that, uh, that you would continue to reveal yourself to us, that, uh, that your word would become increasingly true in our hearts as well, uh, that you would regularly soften our hearts and give us faith like a child, uh, that we would trust in you, uh, and at the same time, uh, that we would be growing and maturing in our faith, um, uh, which I, I guess means uh, that we would even be more childlike uh, with our trust. Um, Lord, please do not let our hearts be hardened but let us uh, have increased trust in you because you are the one who provides. You are the one who cares. Uh, you are the one uh, that ultimately deserves all of our praise. And so we thank you and we do praise you. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us, everybody.